Welcome back to part three. So we're lead IDing a Y9 lead dual voltage motor and we're on step seven now. So as you can see I've already started and uh, I just want to explain this before we move forward. So C, E, and G again are our benchmarks and in step six what we did is we applied 15 volts to A and I. We put a jumper between I and C and then we measured between a and E and A and G, the voltage. And um, in this case, I found that I had 18 volts between A and E and 18 volts between A and G. So my polarity, my polarity was correct. So my A letter stays for T1 and my I letter stays for T4. Now, what we're doing in step seven here is we have to rotate that same procedure 120 degrees. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna move it over here. Now, hopefully you guys can work ahead of me on this because it's going to be the same thing that we just did in step six. So let's take a look at how we apply it to the B phase here. So where do we apply 15 volts? We're going to apply it to T2 and T5. So I'll just draw that out here, 15 volts to D and B terminals in this case. We have to put a jumper in between B and E. That's so important or in this case B and E, this would be T5 and this would be T8. And then we gotta have our voltmeters measure the three windings. So you can see how they're all connected together and then we have a voltmeter on this side also measuring between in this case D and G or in any case, this would be T2, and this would be T9, and then T2 and T7. Okay, so same procedure as step six. We're just moving at 120 degrees, and all the same steps apply. So I apply 15 volts here to D and B, and in this case, I had 12 volts here, and I had 12 volts here, which means then if that's the case, this would be D and this would be B. So I got to erase this. This is D. Got to erase this. This is B. Okay, and that's set up. And step eight, we have to do it again. So we're going to rotate the procedure one more time. So let's do that right here. So I'll just draw this out real time. drawings are getting sloppier as we go along. Okay, we had A and I here. Whoops, I here. I don't know. Just forget about that. And this is C, this is E, this is G. And then we determine that this was actually B here and this was D here. So we're going to remove that jumper and we're going to move it over here. So originally I had F here and H here. And again, we're going to rotate that same procedure another 120 degrees. So I'll just fast track that. So 15 volts will be applied to F and H. I gotta put my jumper now into F and G, and then I'm applying, sorry, I'm measuring between in this case E and H, and I'm also gonna measure between C and H. So just using the NEMA terminals in this case, I'm gonna apply 15 volts to T3 and T6. I'm gonna put a jumper between T6 and T9, and then I'm gonna measure the voltage between T3 and T, what's that, eight, and T3 and T7. So a lot of steps there. Hope you can, hopefully you can visualize all this. And when I measured, I um, I got 18 volts on both sides, so um, so these lettering stayed. I just want to state one more time, though, if you don't get anything, um, if you don't get 18 volts or you don't get 12 volts and you get something else like 15 volts is pretty common, um, then there's an issue and you have to start the whole process again. And it could be anything. Maybe you labeled something uh, twice. I've seen that before where, you know, there's an E here and then an E here. Well, we know that that's wrong then. Um, you can't have two E's unless you label them at the beginning like that, but don't do that. Okay, and then the last step, because now we have it all labeled. 
we have every all nine terminals labeled and everything checks out so the last step is we just have to get this thing up and running and we're going to do the low voltage connection so let's see what that looks like for this motor how are we doing here can you see what's going on close enough okay so we have a i c e G, B, D, H, F. So there you go. And a little review on the lettering, or NEMA numbering, I should say, is that's T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T7, T8, and T9. So we're going to bring L1, three phase power. Now this motor is a um, well it's actually a 230 volt slash 460 it's a dual voltage motor and we have access to 240 volts in the lab so we're going to take L1 to the A and we're going to take L2 to B and we're going to take L3 to H and we have to connect this for low voltage so A is also going to connect to C because we want these in parallel. B is going to connect in this case to E and H is going to connect to G and then T4, T5 and T6 are all going to connect together so you need a jumper from I to D and a jumper from D to F. Now you can bring it around if you want but that's redundant um, but anyone you can do I to D and then I to F uh, whatever makes sense um, because there's more than just this way to do it. Okay, that is in a low voltage connection. If I flip on the breaker, this motor should spin. And thinking about the NEMA standards, what direction should it spin in if it was spinning in the um, according to standards? From the front, it should spin counterclockwise. And then looking at it from the back, which is the drive end, it should spin clockwise. Okay, that is the lead ID process for the 9 lead Y motor. Have fun.